our G-Plus company. And this is our Campbell Team um, first Monday of the month training call series, and we just want to welcome you aboard. And this evening, especially starting up 2018, we have none other than Catherine Lee, who will be teaching us all around motivation to momentum. And Catherine Lee is a business strategist and social activist. She is the creator of a faith-based personal development system, the ultimate source and founder of the nonprofit Pure Hope Foundation. You may recognize Catherine uh, from one of her appearances on the Oprah Winfrey Show. She is the author of the book, Interrupted, and is a national marketing director and 100 Club member with the Juice Plus Company. So, Catherine, I'm hoping that you're right there and ready to go. I sure am, Wendy. It's such an honor to be on this evening. Well, well I'm welcome you. telling you this topic of motivation to momentum has been stirring in my mind, and I don't know anybody more motivated and that creates more momentum than Wendy Campbell. So thank you for hosting tonight, Wendy. <laughs> um, I, I thought uh, the only other word I could put in there is passionate, and, and we'd have you all wrapped up. So um, it's an honor to teach this, especially with somebody on the line that lives it out every single day. So the way I want to start with all of you, if you have a pen and paper, we're gonna I'm going to go through some mindset um, type of things and then some questions so that this can be both, you know, core foundational information as well as, you know, what's some practical things to get our minds thinking. The first thing I want to talk about is the fact that when we think about motivation and momentum, it's important to know that motivation is something that the brain thrives on. Our, our according, you know, it's true that according to research, two factors effectively help people achieve behavior change and the, the desires that they have, and that is incentives and accountability. So the first couple of things you'll want to think about is what is motivating you? Is it a true positive incentive, and do you have accountability in place? Now, we can be motivated out of pain or pleasure, right? So we can have pain motivators, meaning, oh, my goodness, if I don't make this change in my life, I'm going to have this negative result. Most of us can know that if we don't make a difference in our health, statistically, we're probably going to have a negative outcome to our health later if we're not doing the things that are taught in inspiring healthy living around the world through the Juice Plus Company. So we know that that, that can be a painful motivator. Or if I don't save money, spend less, you know, save more, then I might have to struggle in retirement. That could be a pain motivator. But the brain is more centered on rewarding motivation to, that creates momentum, that creates sustainability when there is a reward that is positive. So what are incentives for yourself? What are your pleasure motivators? The things that you say, if I do this, then I get that. And the, that is a positive thing that makes you feel good, that you enjoy. So that's really important to keep in mind. With that being said, I'm going to share some core mindset thoughts and then go into a few questions to end the call. So the first thing I want to talk about is choice management versus time management. I get asked all the time and hired all the time for, to, to, to teach goals and to help teams be more effective. And one of the things that I'll get a phone call for is a request, will you come in and teach time management? And I will always respond and say, well, I'm sorry, I can't do that. There's no such thing. And then I always meet silence on the other end of the phone. And I quickly then follow up and say, because there's no such thing as time management, tick-tock, 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 time marches on. So what there is, is choice management, what we do in the time that we are given. And that is called choice management. So once we understand that, we can begin with decisions, because it all begins with a decision. I'm sure we've all heard the quote that a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step, and the first step is a decision, you know, making the choice that I'm going to manage my time and then making decisions on what I'm going to do within that time instead of having, again, time management, it's choice management. And it, it's interesting, the other day my daughter, Corinne, she's now 25 years old, and for the first time we're using one of those amazing Juice Plus National Marketing Director benefits that we have because they've been so healthy. All my kids are so healthy. We don't use 
her benefits very often, but she all of a sudden realized she's an artist, but her eyes were bothering her. And she said something that I thought was pretty profound in the sense of being motivating, creating momentum. And she said, wow, you don't realize how bad your vision is until you get glasses. And I thought, well, isn't that true with us? We don't realize how bad our vision is until we get clarity, until we get a picture of our preferred future, which is vision for our side. And so it's really important to do that and to spend some time. This is a great time of year to do that. And, you know, I can't separate my faith from who I am. So I'll just give this one line. And I believe the first step after you've made the decision that you're going to choose how you're going to spend your moment and you've decided you're going to begin, the first step would be connect to the one that knows it all and has it all, right, that has the master plan. And then beyond that, we have been fearfully and wonderfully made in a way that we can integrate and animate the gifting we've been given. So one of the core things that I teach to create motivation and momentum is to have a clear vision and then have a clear distinction between goals versus those dreams, intentions, and visions. So I'm going to I'm going to use the words dreams, intentions, and vision all interchangeably, but they're all one category, and goals are another category. Now this is something that I've taught for years, but I don't hear it taught anywhere else, and I think it is a huge distinction in creating motivation and creating momentum. And this is what I'm going to talk about. Goals, in my definition of goals, goals are activities that you are 100% in control of. So goals are activities or even mindsets that you are 100% in control of. Now, dreams, intentions, and visions are all bigger than you. And what I mean by that is if you look at them, if you have a dream, intention, or a vision, and you look at it and say, I am not 100% able to make this happen on my own. In other words, someone else or circumstances have to respond in order to have that dream, vision, or intention come true. That's how you know it's a dream, vision, or intention, not a goal. And the reason why this is so incredibly important is because I have seen people that have motivation at the beginning of a year, and they're going to make new business goals, they're going to make new um, individual goals, financial goals, and they go after them. And really, the quote-unquote goal, the thing they're calling a goal, really has to do with a lot of other people's decisions and circumstances falling into place or the right timing. But what happens is that they think that it's all up to them. They set that, what they think is a goal, which is actually a dream or an intention. And then when it doesn't happen, this is the key, they beat themselves up or think, I failed, what's wrong with me? And this negative cycle starts. Where if instead they will understand that, and I will understand, and you will understand that dreams, visions, and intentions are always things that are bigger than us. Meaning, again, somebody's, somebody's circumstances, somebody else's decision, it, it makes an impact of whether or not it can happen. That's a dream, vision, or intention. So we need both. We've got to have vision. Without vision, people perish. We need a direction to go in. So it's very important for you to understand you want a vision for your brain to move toward, a vision to have in front of you, but set your goals as things that you're 100% in control of so that when you have done something, you can celebrate it. You can say, for instance, let's say in the Juice Plus company, somebody says, I have a goal of getting 25 customers this month. Is it, oh my goodness, it's January, New Year, people are spending billions of dollars on healthcare products. We have the best one out there. So, of course, we can all have huge vision and intentions for this month. But it's a vision and intention. You aren't 100% in control of that happening because somebody else has to say yes. But what are you in control of? You're in control of setting goals, things you're 100% in control of, which would be inviting people to take a look at our business or to a call like tonight. It would be inviting people to the education. It would be, you know, sitting across from somebody, setting appointments. We could go on and on. It's all in our mission-driven model in, uh, in talking to people about their needs and desires, asking them what their health goals and their visions and intentions are, and then offering them what we have to give. This is so incredible to, to motivation and creating momentum 
because I've watched over and over and over for 20 plus years, both in our company and in other realms where people have this vision or dream and intention that somebody else responds to in a negative way to where they don't meet their dream or intention and then they beat themselves up. So that goal, it, you can celebrate to say, I talked to uh, 75 people this month and I invited them to take a look at the product. I followed up to see you know, what they thought. And, and you can then pat yourself on the back and say, well done, I did a good job. Now what do I need to adjust to get a different result that I want? Do I need to talk to more people? Do I need to, you know, be patient with the timing and circle back around in conversations to people? That's where we have the most power and control because that's where we have the greatest success. The truth is, is that happiness, success, and even sound relationships depend on letting go of control of things that are beyond our control. So we need to let go of controlling things that are beyond our control. So this could be anything, examples, examples like feelings of other people. You know, if they say yes or no to something we offer, this is our, our future and our past. <laughs> we can't control those things or even whether or not people like us. I have so many people that prejudge whether or not they're going to share the product or the business or do other things because they're scared of what other people will think. Well, if we can let go of that control and just hit our goal of, of doing the activity, we're going to have a lot more happiness, a lot more success, and we're going to have a lot more sound relationships because we're not trying to control other things. So that's one of the most foundational parts of having you know, motivation that leads to momentum because then you are celebrating the things that you are doing right and you're able to coach the things that don't turn out the way you want to. You can make adjustments to your goals, and that makes a big difference. So the other key in creating motivation is to know what you want. Be really clear on what you want out of life because people like to follow people that know where they're going and that are passionate people. That's why I talked about you, Wendy, in, in beginning this call. You know, when people know what they want, they know where they're going, and they're passionate, you attract more people. And we are in control of that, knowing what we want and being passionate and being clear on where we're going. And also know what you don't want. I, people always say, oh, you know, goal setting, goal setting and momentum and motivation. And the truth is, is that it has a lot more to do with subtracting than it has to do with adding to. The clearer we are on what we want and what we don't want will help us with our yes and no's to be able to say yes and no to things. And it helps us live in integrity. It helps us live within our priorities and our values. So we need to know the difference between goals and, and dreams and intentions. We need to be clear on what we control and what we can't. We want to know what we want and what we don't want. And it takes some time to really sit down and make decisions around that. Once we've done that, this is key. You may have all heard it, but the question is, are you doing it? And that is write it down. Write it down. Put your, put your intentions, put your goals in ink, and that actually creates more momentum for you. But this is the big one. We, we do hear a lot of people talk about write out your goals, but the bigger thing that has the greater influence is to tell someone what your goals and dreams and intentions are, sharing it with the other, other people. And it's twofold. When you tell someone, you tell people what you're going to do, and then you tell them what you did. This is really important because there's those two factors that I talked about that help people create behavior change are incentives and accountability. So we want to base rewards, which is why having the difference in goals is important because we, we get to reward ourselves if we complete and check off the things that we're 100% in control of. We get to say great job, and that feeds the reward center of the brain, which creates motivation for you to want to do it again. There's all sorts of positive brain chemistry that happens. But the second thing, remember, the research that helps the two things that help people achieve behavior change are incentives. That's the reward center. And then accountability. Accountability accelerates performance. So it's what it is doing, it's engaging in the power of social expectations. I like to call it positive peer pressure. When you tell somebody what you're going to do, and then you also say, I'm going to check back in and tell you how it went, 
that's where the key is. There's been studies that have been done on accountability, and they found that when you just first speak a goal, you have about a 10% chance and likelihood of it coming to fruition. When you take that in just speaking a goal and you write it down and then you schedule and protect it, which we're going to talk about in a minute, making sure that you schedule and protect the activity, and then you tell somebody else that you're going to do it, you now have gone from a 10% likelihood of bringing that, that goal and vision to fruition to a 65% likelihood. Those are some good odds. You have increased tremendously. Now get this, if you not only tell someone you're going to do it, but then you make a commitment to have a specific appointment with the person that you said I'm going to do this with and to tell them how it went, that, again, you have to schedule the accountability. You have a time and a date to say, I'm going to let you know by this date how it went. Now your success goes up to 95%. We've gone from 10 to 95% likelihood of achieving success by having incentives that specifically accountability in place. That is one of the best things I love about our Juice Plus company is that we have this incredible tribe of great like-minded people that are so accepting and they're cheerleaders and coaches, right? A cheerleader says, that's all right, that's okay, we're going to beat them anyway. They just are positive <laughs> all the time, right? And, and Wendy, you're one of the best cheerleaders out there, but you also are not all cheerleader. You're also coach where you say, that's not all right, that's not okay. You said you wanted to beat them, right? And so we've got to make a different play. That's a coach. A coach will tell you the truth. They won't just tell you what you want to hear. That's all right. That's okay. But they also say this is the way we're going to beat it anyway. This is the plan. This is where this is accountability. And that coaching is so incredibly important. So creating that place where you have people that cheer for you and they coach you, meaning they tell you the truth. And that is very important. So once you know you know, that you're, you know the difference between goals and dreams and intentions. You've got those powerful relationships in place. You know what you want, you don't want. You've written it down. You've told people what you're going to do and scheduled the appointment to say this is how it went. This is where you really start to create momentum. And I, I always say to people, once you find out what goals are important to you, you get to choose the pace of moving towards those goals at, a, at that pace that makes you feel vibrant and successful. And again, that's one of your best attributes, Wendy, is you tell people, look, I just want to do for you what you want, but I'm going to tell you the truth. If you're saying you want one thing, but you're acting and doing activity that meets another, we're going to talk about that. It's whatever the pace you want, right, and moving forward. And it's, again, choosing a pace that allows you to feel vibrant. And that's different. Some people need a big, huge, giant, they call it big, hairy, audacious goal or something. I've never understood the hairy part of that, but regardless, it's like you want something huge and that's what gets your fire going. That's what gets you revved up. And if it's too puny of a goal, you'll never be motivated. Others, and really more of the population, needs what's called early win, which means you set up a goal that you know 100% you are 100% in control of, and you know 100% without hesitation that you can do it. And so measure your goal. Ask yourself that question, is this a goal that I know I'm setting that's realistic, that I'm going to do it? And the way I test this, if I'm working with a coaching client or if I'm working with myself in my own calendar, where I say, am I, am I 100% sure I can get that done? Is there any hesitation in me at all? Are there any obstacles that could come in the way, and what is my plan to take care of the obstacle if it comes in the way? When you've done that, you're creating that great likelihood, and you build early wins, and that builds your belief muscles in yourself and in your goals that you can do this, and then you'll build a bigger goal and a bigger goal, and, and or you'll stay consistent with small but powerful goals added up is what actually brings more momentum than one big giant leap for most people. About Only about 25% of the population really get revved up when there's a huge, it has to be a big goal that scares them to death to, in order for them to get revved up enough to do it. Most people, 
want those early wins, that pace that I can conquer. The challenge is most people don't spend much time thinking about what they want and don't want, setting 100% things that are in their control, actions that are in their control, and that are realistic for them to do that then lead to that bigger dream or vision, the more likelihood of it coming to fruition. So we want to do that. And then I'm going to give just a few things, and then I'm going to leave you with a few few questions. So a few more core mindsets to create motivation and momentum. And that is, this sounds crazy, but it is one of the things that I see is the greatest lack, and that is show up. Don't just talk about it. Don't just say it, but be there. Show up to your life. Show up. I I hear more people talk but not show up than probably anything else out there. And I don't know, it doesn't, it's all individual of why we set goals that are too big or we don't tell ourselves or others the truth, whatever it may be. But the key is set goals where you're going to feel that vibrant pace and you're going to show up. And then when you show up, this is really key, be present and fully engaged. When you show up, be present and fully engaged. You know, we at the Hope Home where we restore um, young women that have been victimized by trafficking, we have equine therapy. And it's so fascinating to watch these horses. They can feel your heartbeat when you are three feet away. And they respond completely to your mood. Now, I'm used to being around horses. I love horses. But one day that we went there, I was in a really stressful mood, and I was trying to hide it. And I was trying to fake it, and I, I was talking to one of the girls about it. She hadn't ever been around a horse, so she was nervous. And I'm like, oh, it's no big deal. And I went to reach out to this horse, and it backed up away from me. <laughs> you know, it felt my stress. It was like, you are not going to fake it with me, right? And the truth of the matter is, is I feel like we know it about ourselves if we're faking it. We can feel our own heartbeat. We know what's the truth. So really being present and fully engaged. And what's so fascinating is this last week, one of our, the young women was there, and she was daydreaming. Her mind went somewhere else. And when she checked out, the horse acted out. The horse knew she wasn't in control. She, he knew it, she wasn't present, and it acted out. It went out of the fence. It shouldn't have gone out. And that had never happened to her before. She has done a really great job. It's her mind was somewhere else. And people... When you are working with people and caring about them, especially in our Juice Plus company, we're caring about people's health and their wealth, two things that are very important to them, their income, and then, of course, their dreams and and their, their goals as they move forward, and their health, something that's very personal for people. And so I think it is incredibly important that we show up and we're fully present. And the way you know you're fully present, by the way, is to live through your senses. That's how we teach the girls to get present. And it's how I would teach any of you, meaning you listen to your breathing. You, If you're with someone, you look them in the eye. You really tune in to listening to what they're saying. So tune in, use your senses. So show up and be fully engaged. And then this sounds like a negative, but it's really important, and that is prepare, prepare for failure. <laughs> the bottom line is, is if you're going to create momentum, you better be ready for failure. The most successful people I know have simply failed more than everybody else. But here's the difference. Every successful person I know, and I know a lot of you saw Oprah last night give her speech on TV, and she's, number one, the most present person I've ever been around, and number two, she knows what failure is. That's what she and I, you know, were talking about in a lot of different ways is how do you love yourself, you know, despite certain things that you don't necessarily conquer, you know, how can you have all this success but have struggle at the same time? So the key with Oprah or anybody else that has succeeded despite failure is they learn the lesson and they keep moving on. They are aware of the obstacles and they learn from the lesson. So put your energy into the future in not letting that thing happen again instead of dwelling on the past and, and regretting that. Regret brings no momentum, but learning from the lesson brings all momentum. So here's how you turn. These are the three big questions to turn failure into learning and building momentum. And these are the three questions when you have a failure. What went wrong? What would I do differently next time? And who can help me? Again, what went wrong? What would I do differently next time? And who can help me? 
This helps us embrace humility and to realize it's okay not to know and be everything. And when we do that, that's the difference in successful people is they are scared and they fail, but they continue to move forward. It's so important. And then finally, a couple of thoughts and then the question. Do what you love with people you love. We've already talked about finding a tribe of like-minded people and be willing to do hard things. You know, in life, there are sometimes have-tos, so you get to. And not all of us like to make a follow-up call. Not all of us like to get a no. But again, the people that have been the most successful in this business have simply gotten more no's than other people. That's just the truth because they've been willing to get a no, to be uncomfortable, to make a follow-up call, whatever it may be. You, There are some things that you don't enjoy, but you, you get to have to. You have to do certain things so you get to. I always say, you know, you have to do laundry so you have clean clothes. You know, you have to wash your dishes so that you have clean uh, dishes to eat off of. So we don't always enjoy things, but there are certain things that you just accept that there are have to so you get to. And final thought before the questions, and that is make sure that what you're doing ultimately benefits somebody else or at least your success then has a percentage that benefits other, other someone else. Because it's the antidote to burnout and nothing is ever enough syndrome. Because I've watched people that were so self-focused in meeting their goals and building momentum for themselves, and they have left a whole lot of hurt people behind them. And instead of somebody who has built success and has looked how they can help other people, and they leave a legacy behind them. So it's very important. So with all this in mind, we want to know that we can manage our minds. We get to choose our choices because it's choice management, not time management. And we get to play up in life. <laughs> this is the best group of people I've ever been around in my life in this Juice Plus world. And when I used to coach high school lacrosse, I said to the girls, look, we can, we can stay in the same league and we can play these people and we can feel good about ourselves. We will probably win most of the games or at least, um, you know, do well. Or we can play up and we can actually learn because we're playing at a higher level. And that's going to make us better. And that is where you're going to always do the best is to play up. So with all that being said, live in a rhythm, get out of your comfort zone, and have fun. So here's my final clarifying questions for you that you can think about for yourself to begin to formulate some very specifics to create momentum and motivation for yourself. Number one, what do you want to carry forward and what do you want to leave behind in this new season? What are the things you want to carry forward? And what is, I want you to picture this last year and, and this new year or last season and this new season as a big giant cavern. And you're getting ready to jump across from one side. It's like the size of the Grand Canyon. And you have to leave behind. In fact, some of you better put it in a box and burn it. Or you think you might go back. But <laughs> what is it that you want to leave behind? We all have things to carry forward. We all have things to leave behind. Decide what that is. One more, another question. What's one thing you can do this year to increase your enjoyment of life? What's one thing you can do this year to increase your enjoyment? Having fun is so incredibly important. One, another question. What's the single biggest time waster in your life? What is the single biggest time waster in your life and what are you going to do about it? When, when I bought my very first home, it had these gorgeous rose bushes outside and I had never grown rose bushes. And my mom came by one day and said, can I take care of them for you? And I said, sure. And she pruned them back to like stuff. And I was so upset and mad. I'm like, what have you done? I didn't understand pruning at that time. And she's like, honey, the new growth won't come if you don't prune these things out. And the same is true for us. Some of us need to, to cut out some time wasters in our life. And then two more questions. What one habit are, do you want to establish in this new year? What is one habit that you want to establish in this new year? And what is one new way you can be a blessing this year? When we keep these things in perspective, we will create motivation that creates momentum, that creates the revolution that the Juice Plus company was established for. So, Wendy, thank you for allowing me to be on the call tonight. It is an honor always to speak to the Campbell team. It's my family. Oh, honey, thank you so much. And I've been writing furiously 
because I am focused on 2018, and I knew that this this talk and you would be such a gift to every single person listening, and I was right. I hate to say it, but I was right. So I know that they want to give you their own thanks. So I'm going to open up the line, you guys, and I'm so grateful that we had this beginning to end with these questions to focus on. This could totally change up our future if we if we take it seriously and write it all down, right, and tell someone. I love the accountability piece. Okay, here you guys go. Hold on. 